Hello everybody, it's me again. This is my normal monthly vlogging marathon. This is my third vlog this evening. It's around, I don't know, 10.30, almost 11 o'clock at night. And I am going to share with you my September roundup of the month makes for the month of September. So I have made one, two, three, four, five <coughs> items I think this month. Um, which is um, quite an accomplishment, really, with everything that I've had to, uh, with, with the baby Theo and everything. Baby Theo is five months old now, um, and he is starting to sleep a lot better. He's weaning now as well in terms of food. Like, I, I do breastfeed until they're about a year anyway, but in terms of food, he is starting to eat some solids, which is really, really nice. Um, and he's starting to smile and laugh and everything, so he's a bit more of an interactive baby, which is really great. So I've not had much time to sew, but I have made a couple of um, nice pieces. One, two, <coughs> three of them are repeats, but I mean, not I haven't done them in a long time, apart from the next dress, which I have done recently, but I'll show you that as well. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about was a Maeve skirt that I've made. So I received this pattern from a um, Little Miss So-and-So So Luxurious kit that I have had in the past, and it is a lovely uh, tiered skirt, as you can see here. Line drawings are, uh, are as such, and with this you can literally Actually, there's lots of different options so these aren't the only options as in they are the only options but they're not the only combinations you can do so you can play around with all the tier lengths you can have mini midi and maxi it's an elasticated waistband and the elastic is two inches long which is nice and thick and just feels really secure when you're wearing it and then you also have a waist tie that you can put on that actually is it fully functional? Well, it does work, but it, you don't really need it. But it looks nice just as an extra bit of detail. And it can work if, for example, you've made it too big, which you probably wouldn't with the elastic. But maybe if you're fluctuating in sizes, then the waistband is useful. I have put it on anyway because I just like that extra detail. This Maeve skirt goes from a size 0, which is a waist of 26, hip of 34, all the way up to a size 18, which is a waist of 38.5 and a hip of 46.5 and lightweight fabrics is what it asks for i made this in a atelier brunette um viscose crepe for my so luxurious um, make last year and i've also made it i have made it again this time around in a viscose chalet remnant from lady McElroy, which i bought last year in the sale and I bought two meters of it and it, I was planning to make a blouse out of it, but I just haven't gotten around to making that. And I just decided it'd be the perfect remnant for making a skirt. So I'll show you the skirt here. So this is the fabric. It's, I think it's called Blooms or something. Lady McElroy, black base, lovely floral bouquets there. And the skirt is as such. I ran out of fabric actually, so I had to use some black, um, it's actually linen, which doesn't really work. Linen for the ties. Uh, but you can see there's um, one tier there, second tier and a third tier. And it also has some lovely roomy pockets, which is great. The waistband, as I say, is lovely and thick and it's just like really lovely and secure to wear. I went for the size 10 in this one. Um, which is a waist of 31, hip of 39. My waist is not 31, but somehow because of the elastic, it fits me really, really well. Um, and so that's the one that I went for. Very easy to do. It literally is just um, gathering your tears and attaching those, inserting pockets and creating a waistband and sewing that down. And also the elastic is sewn down on the waistband as well. So you've got two layers of stitching there. A layer of stitching here and um, this stitching um, joins the waistband to the skirt and then these two stitching <coughs> lines create a channel for the waistband and you've got buttonholes there so really 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 lovely easy make I quite like the idea of this because I don't necessarily have to look at the instructions and I do have a lot of sort of two meter remnant pieces in my stash that I can create skirts with create skirts out of which is really great. I do have a picture of it as a loose thread here, but the 
top that I'm wearing doesn't really go with it I don't think and also in the photo it doesn't look as vibrant as it does in real life I'm gonna post it up here I'll post it for you anyway just so you can have a look but I'm hoping to make a couple of Tilly and the Buttons Freya um, long sleeve tops with a cow neck I quite like that for winter and I'm hoping to make quite a few plain tops to go with some skirts so this skirt I also have the Atelier Brunette one which I've spoken about already and I'm going to be making quite a few other skirts as well so I've got quite I would quite like a lot Lot of mix and match separates that I can put together so maybe like a navy a black um, sort of a burgundy um, plain Freya top so the cow necks would work really really lovely with this one and other skirts that I plan to make in the future so that's the first make of September and that's that one um, and then the next thing that I made in September not in a, any particular order is the next dress <laughs> Um, you, you've seen this uh, a long time, for, for, you've seen these several times before. I think this is probably my fifth Nyx dress and it's this one here. And I've made it in a, let me just, I've made it in a um, cotton from Minerva Crafts. It's tufted cotton. There's another term for it, but I, I can't think of it at the moment. Tufted cotton. So it's like, like these little tufts on a sort of duck egg blue, blue cotton um and um i love this dress i love the next dress anyway um and it is a lovely bohemian kind of flowy dress you can have it in short sleeves or long sleeves you've got gathers at the sleeve heads you have a gathered yoke at the front enclosed burrito method yoke here and a gathered yoke at the back then you have button loops for the front Sorry, they're not being ironed. And I've just chosen some wooden buttons here. You've got an elasticated waist. Tiered skirt. So you've got one tier, two tier, three tier. And I've inserted pockets myself. Um, the pattern doesn't come with pockets. But I've just added some pockets myself because, you know, I love pockets. I love them not only because you can put stuff in them, but I like to put my hands in them when I don't know what to do with my hands if I'm standing around talking to people. I feel more secure if I have my hands in my pockets. Anyway. I'll pop up a, a photo of my next dress, of myself wearing the next dress. So this goes, um, I have spoken about the next dress um, many occasions, um, but it has got a lot of ease in it. So I had to size down about three or four sizes down. And I think it's the perfect, um, I think I've reached a perfect size. Now I think I've gone for a size six, which I'm nowhere near a size six, but because of the extra ease in the fabric, that is what I've gone for. It's a very straightforward sew. Well, I wouldn't say straightforward sew. It's straightforward for me now because I've made it several times. The only tricky thing I would say is maybe getting the um, the bias binding for the button placket done um, and also the burrito method of the collar of the yoke. Uh, might be a little bit tricky but apart from that it's actually a really really satisfying so and as I say I've made quite a few of these already am I planning to make any long sleeve ones probably not for a while because I've got my eye on several other sort of autumnal long sleeve um, patterns I quite like the idea of sort of like a ruffle neck um, and I have my my um, my mind I in my mind, I have a couple of um, fiber mood dresses that I want to make up. Um, so I will probably share those with you at a later date. But I think the next dress for now is going to be put on the shelf because I've made a lot of those. And yeah, so that's that one. The next thing I made was the Comey cardigan as part of my All Set to Sew So Luxurious kit. The Comey cardigan is wardrobe by me. The pattern is here. <coughs> And it's the cardigan here. I've chosen a pink, um, dusky pink jersey by Lady McElroy to make this up. Um, and it's here. So it has like a big shawl collar, long sleeves. It's a drop shoulder. And it has pockets. It does come with a tie as well. But I found that when I've worn it with the tie, it kind of looks like a dressing gown. So I've omitted the tie. I just haven't worn it with a tie. And I just use it as like a layering piece just to wear around the house that sort of thing um i'll pop up some photos of myself wearing it as i say i have got a separate video for this where i reveal my garment for my unboxing for this month's um all set to so so luxurious kit and as i said in that video i don't think this one is a hundred percent um a successful mate because as i say it 
for me it looks a bit like a um dressing gown so it probably wouldn't be a piece that i'd be grabbing for you know day in day out to wear um but um i think with every every pattern that you make every mistake that you make you learn you learn you learn new things um so with this i've learned not to when i'm working with jersey to try not to stretch things out because i find that a lot of things are stretched out most especially actually the tie which i made for it it's all kind of stretchy and just not very nice so i just don't use it at all um but that's that make that's a comey cardigan if you want more detail please have a look at my all set to sew unboxing and i'll have more detail i'm going through this in more detail and then the actually not the last dress i will before i forget i also made a dress for a friend of mine it was sort of my first commission as it were and i made her the tilly and the buttons lyra dress but she had some um quite specific instructions she wanted sort of like a modern victoriana take on a dress so she wanted the ruffles she wanted the long sleeve she wanted the gathered the gathered sleeve heads she wanted it full length with the ruffle at the bottom um, and that's what we went for so with the tilly and the buttons dress i omitted the collar um i mean i'm sure you've all seen the lyra dress i'll pop up a photo of the lyra dress um i omitted the collar and i left the collar stand and i added a three centimeter high collar um ruffle instead of the collar and all it was in terms of the length of the actual ruffle piece i googled it and normally and um, they say three times the length of the of the collar collar stand so i did the collar stand times three and that was my ruffle times three centimeter in height plus a seam allowance and i just um i um did right sides together um overlocked the edges turned it inside out turned it right way out put some gathering stitches in and i um attached it to the um collar stand and sewed it down it's a beautiful stand-up collar um ruffled collar and then with the sleeve heads all i did was um in order to create extra poof um, at the top of the sleeve head i followed a couple of tutorials and essentially the easy way to do it is where you have on the sleeve um, piece where you have the notches for uh, the front and back um, you cut a um, horizontal line there and then you um, create a gap normally it's at least two inches to create um, some poof at the top and I just went for the standard two inches so you create a gap so you cut it horizontally create a gap move the top of the sleeve head up a bit by two inches fill it in with paper true the lines on the side and there you have your um your extra poof at the top of the sleeve head um, and that's all I did in terms of adjustments for that dress and I'll pop up some photos of the dress I was actually really <coughs> proud of this because well it was my first commission and I just thought that the pieces um, the close-up photos and the details were really really beautiful in this one also I forgot to mention as well I added some interfacing on the sleeve head and that just gave it extra body and I found that out uh, from a post by Eliza Lex from By Hand London and um, she said that she had put interfacing in her sleeve heads and that just created extra body and I thought that was a really good um, thing to have added to this dress as well so that's my one two three four fifth make of the one two three fourth make of the month <laughs> and then last but not least is my second version of my victory patterns sophia dress so the victory pattern sophia dress is this one here it is a sheared bodice you've got several sleeve variations and you can do a peplum top a crop top without the peplum or a dress version and let me show you the line drawings. Oh, here you go lots of different options here so for the dress version you can have the bodice with a short um short sleeve elasticated cuff sort of three quarter sleeves long bishop sleeves and are they called angel sleeves or flutter, flutter sleeves and um, this one so my very first version i made this version here and this particular one has shoulder straps as well to cover your bra and you can actually just use the shoulder straps for all of these variations as well or you can omit them and have a wider square neck and then you have um, top versions you've got crop top with you know you can mix and match the sleeves with the bodices so you've got a crop top here then you've got a peplum and then the dress and then these are all the different sleeves that you get as well so this pattern goes from a size i don't know it goes from a size ah. <coughs> ah. 
it goes from a size zero, which is bust of 32, waist of 24, um, all the way to a size 18, which is a bust of 44, waist of 36. But as I say, because the bodice is sheer, you have an extra, you know, lots of extra room to sort of, that stretches to your body as it were. So I have, I did make one for my project for Jenny Stitches, which I really, really liked. But I was, um, I thought I was able to, I, I thought I could have um, breast, um, my words are all getting muddled up. I thought it would be easy to breastfeed in that dress, but it turns out it's not that easy to access um, breastfeeding in that dress. So I decided to make a second version with a breastfeeding panel. And the version I've made is here. I will show you here. So I went for a pink gingham um, check from Minerva Crafts cotton fabric. And here it is here. So I've gone for the angel sleeves. And this is the shoulder strap here on either side. Then you've got the sheared bodice. And then <coughs> I cut the um, skirt on the bias. And then I also added a ruffle at the bottom on the um, cut on the uh, non, non cut straight as it were. So you've got sort of the bias, you've got the right the squares going this way. And then at the bottom it's going the other way for a bit more detail. And what I did for the bodice is, let me show you. Um, so that's the top of the um, that's the front of the bodice and what I did is I created another panel underneath which I did actually so um, <laughs> so you can see the shearing stitches normally you should only be able to see the elastic on one side and then the matching thread on this side but I was kind of I did some on one side some on the other side it doesn't really matter because that's covered anyway so that would go as such and to breastfeed you would just lift this part up and then this part still covers your midriff and then your um, uh, breastfeeding access is as such. And I was actually quite proud of, of that. I think it works really, really well. It's very, very comfortable and breastfeeding access is really easy. Um, the only downside is um, I made this dress and I haven't yet worn it because the weather has turned. So um, I look forward to wearing that in the summer. Shearing, I have just, oh, and it's got pockets as well lovely pockets as well shearing i have just mastered was it with this dress this is the first time that i was able to master the shearing did i master it no with the, my first victory patterns dress um i was able to master the shearing which is really really great because prior to that i didn't really know how to shear and i was doing it wrong all along i wasn't giving um i didn't have enough um what would you call it enough tension in my thread as I was pulling it out of the bobbin to hook onto my machine there wasn't enough tension and so now I've learned that trick from um, the Stitch Sisters I watched a YouTube tutorial um, about shearing and they had my exact same machine so I was able to use um, the method they used and my shearing is really really lovely I really 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 enjoy the shearing actually Especially because um, this is on gingham fabric, you've got the lines to follow, which makes it even um, easier to do. But I really love the shearing. I love how it all bunches up and it's just really satisfying, a very satisfying. So I'll pop up some pictures of myself wearing it. Um, and I think that's it. That's all I have done for this month. Um, hopefully I will get a little bit more done in <coughs> September, October. September has been quite busy, what with the children going back to school. And for those of you that do follow me, I do home educate my children. Um, my eldest child has now graduated from homeschooling. She's gone off to college. She did really well in her, in her GCSEs, getting top grades, all A stars, apart from one... Uh, one subject where she got a C because we enrolled her into the wrong paper and it wasn't our fault, it was the tutor's fault. She gave us the wrong code and unfortunately she, she got a C, which is still amazing to get a C on the wrong paper. Uh, but she has now gone off to college to study A-levels in maths biology physics and chemistry so all the really easy ones um in recent times actually she's just dropped biology and i thought phew you know just you know relax a bit just take you know uh three subjects that's great but now she's um swapped biology for further maths so i mean what can i do if that's what she wants to do <laughs> she'll have to learn the hard way uh if you know because i think that is a lot of work for her to take on especially um a levels you know that's what she wants to do anyway uh they everybody else is is all well as i say all the children are growing up baby theo is laughing and uh, giggling <coughs> away which is great um and yes um that's all i have to share with you thank you so much for watching and i will hopefully see you again oh 
and I wanted to say as well a big um, hello to my friend Nikki who came over for the weekend with her family and she let me know that she has started sewing and she has made a Tabitha t-shirt from the Make It Simple book and I know that she does watch my vlogs and um, hopefully she's inspired by it when she came and um, we did trace out a couple of patterns i traced out she traced out the billy pattern and i did give her some fabric for the billy sweatshirt from tilly and the buttons so she's very excited to start on that so i thought i'd say a big hello to nikki and also to jasmine who normally watches with her um thank you for a lovely for coming over and sharing a lovely weekend with us and hopefully your sewing journey is just beginning and i hope you um, end up loving it as much as i do okay anyway take care everybody god bless bye bye see you again next time